So welcome back and let's have a look at uh, the second turn um, of our run through of a quick setup of Furioso uh, rules for the Italian walls and uh, we're back at the initiative stage which we did in the first video um, so uh, quickly I'll run through that so um, the uh, crossbow here are on zero so they are on a four lance necks are a zero they are on a six the uh, medium gun on a five. The old band uh, pike are on a minus one. So they're on a one. At least they can move this time. They didn't move at all last time. The ordnance archers are on a plus one. Give them a five. And finally, the French gendarmes are on a plus two, which puts them on a four. So that's the. Um, Initiative for the French. Um, I'm pretty sure you understand how that works now, so I shall do the uh, initiative for the Italians and come back to you. Okay, so we've done the uh, um, the roles for the Papal States Army, and uh, there's just one very quick thing to go through there in relation to the initiative, uh, and that's the Swiss Pike block there that you can see in the blue. Um, they roll the five, their initiative is plus two, which would give them a seven. So anything more than six is considered to be impetuous. And um, the way that we have decided to um, represent that in the, our games, it's not an official rule thing, but we've decided to do this to make it easier for us visually. Um, we're replacing the, the black initiative dice um, with a red impetuous dice and the number that's shown on it is the number over six that has been achieved so in this case we had a five um rolled a five plus two is seven so a one over six so the red dice is showing a one if we'd rolled a six plus two then we would have gone um and gone over uh, by two so the red dice would show two um so there we go um so we'll um Start moving and uh, we'll look at some combat. So we're going to have our first combat here um, between the Swiss pipe block, which was impetuous. Um, it's actually moved, but it didn't quite get into contact. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to fire our skirmishers uh, from the front. And that's going to be two dice against the Lance Neck Pike. One hit, remember success is a five or six. The um, lance necks will get one dice to save that hit, plus one dice for the skirmish screen, plus one dice for being armoured, because these are crossbows. When crossbows fire at armour, the armour um, dice are the same. When muskets, arquebus, gunpowder fires at armour, the armour save is reduced by one. So there we go, uh, five has saved that one hit, so that was a, a bit of a waste of time. But um, what happens now is the Lance Neck Pipe block is on a six. So that means that that is um, going to move first, there are no other sixes on the table after impetuous units have moved. So um, the, the sixes dice is taken off the back of the Lance Necks. We're gonna move the skirmishers back to the base of the pike and do the same for the Swiss. Uh, obviously just going to get themselves out of the way um, and we've just found that sticking them at the back is probably the easier. Um, and that means that the lance neck pike block will move forward and impact the Swiss pipe block and we'll have a look at our first melee. Just here I'll mention that there was a thing called uh, Furioso uh, which is the rules that are actually based at and, and that increases the rounds of combat um, in between units um, who uh, have a particular particular hatred for each other. So Swiss fighting other Swiss, Swiss fighting Lance next, Lance next, fighting Lance next. Um, we'll fight two rounds of combat um, before um, they do a morale test, but I didn't want to include that in this particular bit. I'm just going to do this as a straight fight, just so you can see how the uh, the melee rules work. 
So when units contact each other, the, the fire is considered to be uh, simultaneous. Um, and you just need to work out the, the number of dice that you are going to use uh, on both sides to, um, to calculate the casualties. And that's based on the combat factor of the unit. Um, there is army lists in the rules that give you the combat factor for all the, the various units involved. And um, for Lance next, the combat factor is three. So we're looking at three dice per base in contact um, to, um, to roll. Um, if there were any overlapping bases, they will count as a support uh, and give you an extra plus one dice. But we also, because we're a pipe block, we've got one, two, three, four pikes uh, stands uh, in support and you get one dice for each of those. So we've got a grand total of uh, 10 dice for the lance necks. So let's see how they get on, needing fives or sixes to uh, score a hit. Uh, oh, that's rather good. Um, so we have got three, six hits, uh, which is rather worrying for the Swiss. So the Swiss will get six dice um, to try and save those hits, um, plus one because they are an armoured unit. So here we go for the Swiss, trying to save some um, face. And the Swiss managed to save two. So the Swiss have lost four casualties and a base. So there we go, I've, uh, I've taken the casualties off um, and added the, uh, the base and I did four on, uh, just put a blue dice there with a the four on to remind us how many casualties the Swiss have lost in this action. Um, that's quite a hefty amount, uh, I have to say. So just remember, we said earlier on, I think in the second, um, um, maybe even in the first video, that four hits removes one base. So now it's time for the Swiss to fight back. Um, it's all simultaneous, so that losses don't count. Now the Swiss have five their combat factor is five so they have five dice per base in contact which will give them ten um, plus another four for their supporting bases so they're rolling 14 dice so 14 dice for the Swiss Gives us a paltry three hits. And the Lance Necks have three dice to save the three hits and one extra dice because they are armoured. And they managed to save two hits. So that's um, a victory of uh, four to one on that particular um, combat. So what happens now is once the combat's done and casualties are resolved, you take a combat morale, close combat morale test. And each side starts with the number of dice equal to its combat factor. So that's going to be five for the Swiss and three for the Lance Necks. After that, you, have, you lose a d6 if you had the most number of casualties so the swiss lose one you add a d6 if your opponent has lost a base so the lance necks gain a dice you gain a d6 if you are within an influence range of your general well neither are the general's off um, playing with the cavalry on the other side and um, then there are modifiers for um being twice as big or three times as big, which isn't relevant in this. There's just a difference of one stand that's happened because of the casualties. So in that particular um, case there, then the lance necks for the combat um, morale will roll one success from four dice. And the Swiss will roll rather well. They have rolled three successes from their four dice. So, despite losing the um, melee in terms of casualties, the better classed uh, Swiss 
have won that particular round and they've won by two which means that two additional casualties are caused to the Lancenecks and I'll just put those on now and the Lancenecks are pushed back the equivalent of two bases which is going to be back to there so there we go there's a um a example of a melee and um, it was quite a good one it actually showed us uh, what was going on um, and and how uh, the various um, dice rolls work so uh, we'll run through uh, some more of the game shortly so we've gone through the sixes and um, we're now on to fives so the French have a five with the, their gun, which is just by the old band pike, and also their ordnance arches are on five. The papal state have a unit of familiar ducal on five, a gun on five, and the um, papal pike block is also on five. So it's um, for the uh, with three units, I'm going to allow the uh, the papist uh, boys to go first, and they're going to fire their gun, which is on a five. So take that dice off. One dice for the light dice for the, for the light gun, and then two dice for the ranks on the pipe block. And we've managed to get one hit there, and it's one save for the old bam pike to um, try and stop that hit which they don't, so that's a hit on the old band pike. French turn to do a five. Um, they're gonna fire their gun into the, um, the papal pike block. So we're looking at two dice for the medium gun, another two dice for the ranks. Three hits. So three hits on the papal pike block with three dice to attempt to save them. Save one, so that's two more hits on that pipe block. So I'll just pop some markers down at the back of the pipe block, and that puts them on three casualties, just one behind be, before they need to lose a base. And I'll just move the pipe block forward before we move on to the um, cavalry melee. So we are um, rolled an initiative five base movement of four. Moving for forward nine inches. There we go. And a um, couple of couple of uh, shot units, uh, skirmish screen at the front, uh, within short range. So it's a couple of dice at the old bam pike. And two hits or two potential hits and uh, two saves for that and remember because they're firing arquebus there's no armor to add to that so there's just two straight saves and they've saved one so that's another or a second casualty on the old bum pike and now it's time to move on to uh, our next group of fives which is some cavalry over here um, and um, I'll just move the camera whilst we're still filming, very unprofessional, I know. Um, but just line up there so that we can see the, uh, the cavalry concerned. So we're looking at a unit of uh, French, uh, sorry, French Ordnance Archers versus a unit of Familiar Ducal. We've gone 5-5-5. Five, five, five. It is the French turn to go, so they will move first. The Ordnance Archers will move first. It's irrelevant really at this point because they're both going to contact each other. It's just the ordnance arches will gain that bit of ground. And we're on then to our um, second um, round or second example of melee. And here we've got uh, two units of cavalry in against each other. So very similar to before, um, we're looking at a uh, combat factor. So the combat factor for Ordnance Archers is three. So we're looking at three per base. That unit has charged. So it gets one added to its combat factor. So we're now on 12 dice. 
and that's it. So, um, 12 dice for the Ordnance Archers to try and cause some casualties on the uh, Papal Gendarme. And we've got three. So, we're trying to do some saves now. So, three casualties on the, um, uh, the Borgia Gendarme. So three dice, one for each of the casualties, same as always, but we are the gendarmes are in extra heavy armour, so they get another three dice. So it's six dice to save three hits. And they've saved one. So two casualties to go on to the gendarme. Uh, sorry, the uh, men at arms, whatever you want to call them. Sure, somebody will put a comment on if they think I'm doing it wrong. So, two casualties there. So, the next unit to fight, well, so we've still got this to fight here. So, we've got the um, the Borgia um, return hit, if you like. So, they are familiar Ducal, which are decent um, Italian cavalry. They are on four dice per base, plus one dice per base for charging. So we're on 15 dice. So let's see what sort of damage um, the um, boys can do. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven hits from um, the Borgia boys, uh, which the um, Ordnance Archers will get to save, so that's three, six, seven. One dice per each of the hits. The Ordnance Archers are slightly less armoured, so they only get two dice. So we are on nine dice trying to save seven hits. And we've saved two. So the Archers have lost five. So we've got one base that we're going to lose and one base and then we want a little marker on there as well. Okay, so we then, as we did with the pike block, move on to the, uh, the combat morale. So each side rolls 1d6 for their combat factor. So that's four for the Borgias and three for the Ordnance Archers. You lose a dice if you had less more casualties, so that comes off the Ordnance Archers. You add a dice if your opponent has lost a base, so that goes on to the Borgias. You add a dice if you are on the influence range of your general, and if you can just see the um, uh, Papal General uh, behind, so they get another dice. And then you would get a, a dice if you are uh, more additional dice if you were uh, double the size, but we're not quite there at the moment. We've got three bases to two. So it's six dices versus dice versus two. So for the Ordnance Archers, they get one success. For the, for the Borgias, they get two. So even though that was quite a a, a, a major difference in casualties in terms of morale <coughs> in terms of morale then um, it just means that the ordnance archers have lost one more base sorry one more casualty and a push back one base width now interesting thing here is that the um, the Borgias are also on a five. They're our last unit on a five. So basically, we refight this uh, melee again, but this time the um, the ordnance archers have been pushed back. So let's have a look at that. How that works with the dice. So we'll work the ordnance ar archers out again. So it starts with the combat factor um, of three per base. However, this time. Rather than charging, they've been pushed back. So each of those bases loses a dice. So they're just on four dice. Not disordered, they're not charged, they don't get that extra plus one for charging. Um, so they're just on four dice to hit the Borgias. And that's not bad, bad return. 
they've got two hits um, out of um, that. And Borges um, will get two dice, one off each uh, hit, plus three for their armour in an attempt to save those two hits. And they've saved them both. So the Ordnance Archers have caused zero casualties to the Borgia. Borgia are going to fight back. Four dice per base. However, now we've got one base that isn't um, in contact because it's killed the base in front. So it's just classed as a supporting base. So it just gets one extra dice. So there we go. Um, we've got uh, nine dice to try and cause some casualties on the um, Ordnance Archers. And respectable three. So the Ordnance Archers will get three dice. Um, so that's one per hit plus two dice for their armour. And they managed to save two of the three. So there's just one hit on the Ordnance Archers for this turn so far. And then we do another close combat morale. So we're starting with four dice. This com uh, Start with um, one dice per combat factor. So four for the... Um, Borgia, three for the um, archers, then Borgia, sorry, you lose one for the for having uh, the worst casualties, so that comes off the archers, and um, there's no base losses this time, but the Borgias are still in the influence of the general. So it's five dice to two. The archers are... One success, remember we're looking for fives and sixes, whilst the Borgias have got two. So, they take, the Ordnance Archers take another casualty to bring them up to four, which removes that base. The unit is pushed back another base width. And that melee continues into the next round. So um, two, two rounds of melee, one for each activation of each unit involved. And um, the uh, Borgia Gendarmes, or Borgia Men at Arms, uh, as you would probably expect, uh, have beaten off the French Ordnance Archers. So um, good win there for the Papal State. Um, but in the next uh, game, or sorry, the next fight, which I'm going to show you, it's probably going to be a lot worse. So let's uh, just swing the camera around again and have a look here where we have, again, two units on four, so it doesn't particularly matter who goes first, um, but we have a unit of French gendarme and a unit of Italian condottieri. So I'll move the condottieri in, because that's probably the only advantage they're gonna get, and we'll fight with them first. Condottieri have a combat factor of three. They are charging, so that goes up to four per base. However, when you're fighting French gendarmes to the front who are charging, you lose a dice. So we're starting with three bases, each with three dice, giving us nine dice. So let's see if we can get any joy with this for the Italians. And... They've got two potential hits. French gendarmes to save, obviously extra heavy armoured. Three dice for their armour, two dice for the casualties. So let's try and save them. And oh, they've saved, they've only saved one. Very unusual. So the French gendarmes, shock horror, front page news, actually take a casualty. The French gendarmes fighting back are a four and they are charging five 
So that's um, going to be uh, 15 dice. And so 15 dice coming up. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. Condottieri are um, extra heavy armoured, so at this stage they're going to get um, five dice, one for each casualty and three for their armour. And they've managed to save two. So they have uh, taken three hits. Not quite a base. That's three hits. So exactly the same as we've done in the other melees. Um, we're on to a close combat morale. Uh, so the morale is one dice per combat factor. So that's three for the um, condottieri and four for the gendarme. The um, one who took the most casualties takes the dice off. So that's uh, the condottieri. Nobody's lost a base, um, and um, the Italian general is just out of range. So it's four dice versus two. The French have two successes, and the Italians have none. That's not good for the Italians. So straight away, the Italians, difference between the units is two. The difference between the die rolls is two, sorry. Um, so the Italians take two casualties which will mean a base and one casualty. And they are pushed back two base widths. There we go. So, um, next up, the... Um, Gendarmes are on a four, so they're going to fight next. So similar to the um, cavalry melee that we did uh, a second ago with the Borges and the archers, uh, we're in the same position here with uh, the condottieri. But this is where it's going to get very nasty because the condottieri um, don't like losing. And um, they're going to fight this time round with um, a three for their basic factor. They're not charging, um, but they are losing in the previous round, so they will lose one dice. So we are going to have four dice for the condottieri, which isn't a lot. So let's see what they can do with it. Absolutely nothing. So condottieri are in trouble. The gendarme are on four per base, which is eight, plus one for, and I'll nick that one, the initiative dice for now, um, plus one for the overlap is nine. And that's it for, for the moment. So we've got nine dice versus four. The gendarme. I've got three hits the condottieri will attempt to save those and save two so just one more hit on the condottieri from the French there which then brings us on to the combat morale which we've done a number of times now so it's four dice for the uh, French, three dice for the um, Italians, one dice off the Italians for losing that melee, um, and um, that dice comes back on because they've now been pushed back to within the influence range of the general. So the French get three successes and the Italians get none. So Good batter in there for the um, Italians. They lose another three casualties, which is another base. 
uh, which leaves them with a base and one. They are pushed back three bases and they are now classed as disorganised. So there we go, there's um, quite a few uh, examples of melee there for you um, and then I'm going to come back um, and do a fourth short video just basically uh, wrapping up what I've talked about.